Hey everyone, it's Cindy checking in. I am getting ready for another art vacation. I'm so excited. And I'm really excited because everyone from my last sale over on my vintage channel paid for their items and everything is out to be shipped today. I'm really, really thrilled about that. I can't tell you how thrilled I am about that. That means that I can concentrate now on art. So let me share with you what I, so I, I took a, I took a little break after I got all the packages done and out and ready for a pickup. Um, I took a little break and I decided I was going to put together a puzzle that I've had sitting here in the studio for a while. It's a really vintage puzzle and it's one that did not have a picture. So you didn't know what you were going to assemble. So this is the box. It was really fun. Um, and I'm very grateful because whoever had it before me left a whole bunch of pieces of the puzzle still assembled. So it didn't take me terribly long to do it. I was watching a video from YouTube while I was assembling the puzzle. It was great. Um, if you think you might want to purchase this puzzle and you do not want to know what the picture is, <laughs> Then skip ahead. I'm going to show you the completed puzzle. It was a really interesting puzzle to do because there were pieces that had straight edges that were not edge pieces. And there were edge pieces that had that weren't completely straight. Um, the puzzle is crazy old, so it is actually missing um, it's missing some things. I'll show you anyway. So it is a Merchants of Venice puzzle. Look at the picture, isn't it pretty? But let me show you what I'm talking about. So here on the edge, we're missing, not that one. This one looks like it had a little piece that was stuck in there. So maybe there were a couple of little teeny weeny, weeny weeny ones. And there's a little one missing there. And then I don't know if that was a piece that's not out of the realm of possibility for this puzzle. Um, this one actually is a broken piece. But overall, I think they're pretty much, you know, they're pretty much all there. This one could have been, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this one could have been one of their little teeny weeny puzzle pieces that's missing. And then this one just has a little piece missing off the top of it. But how fun! It was really fun to put together, and it was kind of fun not knowing what the picture was. So I'm going to go back over to the box again in case anybody you know, doesn't, didn't want to be surprised. <laughs> it was really fun to put together. If you like puzzles and you don't want to know, um, what the picture is and you didn't look, if you fast forwarded it, fast forwarded, um, this would be really fun. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to price it at yet. Um, but I needed to know if the pieces were there. So that was really important. Hey everyone, it's Cindy checking in with you. I'm on my art vacation. I've been making it a point to take what I call an art vacation routinely. Um, and this is the weekend that I'm taking in February and I'm very excited about it. Now yesterday was the first day of my art vacation. Um, it was Monday, but I had a doctor's appointment and I ended up doing a whole bunch of things that had to be done that I just haven't had any time to do. And um, so that was good. Got some things off my plate. I don't have to worry about them or think about them any longer. But today I'm back in the studio and um, let me show you some of the things I did yesterday as well as what I'm planning to do today. All right, so you see over here on that table, I did go to an estate sale on Sunday. Actually, I went a whole bunch of places Sunday. Um, so I brought home the stuff, pulled it out, was going through, um, making sure I knew what I had. It was one of those things where I paid, um, I did pay certain things for certain items, but in the end I got a really good deal, so I wanted to just kind of get a feel for what things really were per item, if that makes sense. Then over here I started pulling some things for my sales. Um, I've got five sales in a f several short days, in two weeks, uh, coming up when I'm done. So I started pulling that. I pulled um, items over there for some sales. So that's what I did as far as the um, vintage business went, because even though I'm on vacation, 
I still have to get stuff done. So I did clear off my table today. Uh, don't you love my little makeshift? Um, it's like some stitches there on the back to protect that uh, weak spot on my tablet. Um, but I am getting ready to play some more with a new jelly plate that I got because I had wanted to, first of all, I'm going to turn you around. So one of the things that I wanted to do, um, this was last week, was to make sure that I was either going to keep or get rid of my color laser printer. Um, I believe that whole story was in my last vlog post about how I got this huge unit and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with it. Um, I'm probably... I. I don't know if I'm going to be using it for my um, art print cards or not. Um, talking to my friend, <clears throat> who's also an artist, um, you know, it's not like the cards are to be considered uh, gicle prints or whatever things, you know, that are actual professional um, prints that you would hang on your wall or whatever. They're note cards. <laughs> So the possibility still exists that I could use um, it for that purpose. But for all the other purposes that I picked it up for, I think it's going to work just fine. Um, I was very interested to see if I could get some good prints off of it just for use in my collage work. So I was able to get some nice prints. I printed off this collage sheet. And this was turned into a, a grayscale uh, picture, and then I added some tinting to it, which is why it's not um, solid. And I think it came out okay. My reasoning, one of my reasons, and these are images, by the way, from Magic Moonlight. I got them off of Pinterest. Anyway, one of the one of the reasons why I wanted the laser printer was that when I do have time for art and it's very limited even though I have an art studio <laughs> when I do have time for art often an idea will come to me and I have to act on it or I should act on it then so many times I might want an image or whatever and I have a huge library of images um, many of them copyright free from things that I've picked up um, on my computer well, I could use that image, except I have to then send it as a file over to our local print shop. I have to go pick it up, bring it back, because most of the time, um, inkjet prints do not work for the things that I'm planning to make them work for. So to be able to do this on the fly and have um, nice quality crisp images uh, was a was one of the reasons why I really wanted to to have the printer. Um, the other, well, here and here's the color. They, that had some color in it, but I don't think you could tell. So I did these. I had these images. These are old vintage postcards, um, and so I was able to scan those and uh, print those off. And I'm really happy, actually, with the clarity of those. I think they came out really nicely. And here's a couple other ones you can see. I'm, you know, I, I think they did what I wanted it. I think it did <laughs> what I wanted it to do. Then the other thing that I was very, I thought if it, if it'll do this, then I'm keeping it for sure. So one of the things that I wanted to try was I wanted to try doing a uh, photographic transfer on my jelly plate. And um, so I did go ahead and try that out, and I had some fails before I had some um, successes, partly because I th it, there, there's an act to it. But anyway, so I, I did purchase myself a new jelly plate, a small one. I have a huge one. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I took it somewhere one time to play, and I don't know. It didn't go back where it was supposed to. So I got that. Um, which is nice too because I can use that to roll off paint when I do find the, the new one, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So I printed off and I don't have the actual, um, I don't have the actual pieces here. I don't know where they are. It's, I, that's just the way my life is. So rather than hunt forever and never make the video, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did without having them. I can duplicate the process, but actually I think I'm going to do them this as a class 
proposal and I so therefore I'm not going to teach it to you here but I'll kind of show you what I did so this one was a fail okay now you see the blue paint all over it so um, maybe uh, I'll explain what I did what I did was I printed out a picture here I printed her oh I do have the actual picture okay so I printed her out in black and white on um, just regular copy paper off of my laser jet printer and or my toner printer it's not exactly a laser anyway um, so I printed that off and I tried to do the jelly transfer so I laid the plate the paint down on the plate and I put this on top and I pulled it off and nothing nothing was left that's the usual experience is nothing is left behind so that was a big time fail um, so then I played around again and what I did this time was this one this one is actually done I, I printed it twice so I had it at the best settings on my printer and I printed it two times and I used this and um, I played around with my level of paint and whatever and I did it in this and look what came out. It actually pulled. I was really excited about it. So that worked really, really well. I'm very happy about that. I'm going to play more with the jelly plate today. Um, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I have to go where my muse leads me. So I started writing up today some of the things that I wanted to do, some of the things I wanted to play with, some class ideas maybe that I might have for the future, um, all that sort of different stuff. And I started writing that up and um, just to kind of get my head around what it was that I was trying to accomplish and what I wanted to do. I do have kind of a secret um, art project coming up that I have to work on. <laughs> and that's why if you notice in my um, thing that I'm gonna show you from my planner, I have something covered up. It's because it's kind of a secret project. Um, but I have several different things that I'm gonna play around with today on the jelly plate. I'm going to watch some videos from a couple of different people that I really like here on YouTube that do jelly plate um, prints. One of them is called Yates Makes. I'll put that right here. The other one, for the life of me, and I apologize, I don't remember his name. He's a newer person that I've been following recently, and um, I will put his name here. Um, these two have some really interesting and unusual ways of using the jelly plate, and so I'm going to play around with some ideas there. Again, I'm trying to I'm trying to feel around, get some ideas for maybe possible class uh, proposals, um, things that I want to teach, things that I want to share, um, that sort of thing. And so a lot of times, if I haven't been just playing around, I, I need to get loose. I need to play around with art. That's what sparks that um, idea of what to do for class ideas. And to be quite truthful with you, I'm really much better about when I have to come up with class proposals <laughs> getting creative and doing something because I think what would I want to learn what do I think is kind of fun what is something that I think there's pitfalls to that somebody might want to learn um, for, like this for example a group of women uh, that I get together with routinely for art um, we've tried to do this on a couple of different occasions and every time it has failed every time it has failed so now that I kind of have a better idea of how to do that, that would be a great thing to teach. So that's why um, I think I'm going to save that for the class proposal. If they select it and I do teach it, after I teach the class, I can come on here and, you know, share with you some of that as well. Um, but that's a process. That'll be down the line. Um, so I did that, and I was happy. I was very pleased that that worked with that printer. So obviously once that happened, I was like, yep, keeping it. <laughs> But another bonus, another technique that um, uses a laser printer or a toner, copy, whatever, um, that I haven't done in quite some time because I, of course, don't have a toner copier or a toner printer up until now, um, is the technique where you take a picture, in this case, and that's that magic moonlight picture right there just in a different size. 
And what I did was I laid down some packing tape over top of it and uh, burnished it down real well. And then I just soaked it in some water and then rubbed off the back. So you may have seen this before. So it's not anything, you know, it's not rocket science. It's been around for a while. I like it. I like this technique a lot because it's really fun to lay over text and things in a collage or in, you know, some sort of journal arts or whatever. So that's why I like to do that and I was really happy that it worked. So I thought I would actually share with you some of my fails from the image transfer. And so on this one, the image is right here in the center. And I don't know if you can even make out any of the features of the girl. Her head is right here. Um, but I did try that. It did not come out, as you can see. But I didn't stop. I was like, I didn't want to get... Guys, I really didn't want to take that printer back. So I was trying to make... See, you know, let's try. Keep going. So the next time I did it, look what happened here. You can definitely see her better. I'm going to turn her this way so you can kind of get a better idea. Um, so I'm like, ah, I think it's going to work. So I did that. Then, then, the th the, then I switched images. <laughs> and I don't know if you can even see on there um, this, but that's definitely a big time fail. Um, it did transfer somewhat, but not enough. So, you know, all these playing around things, you know, got me to this final result here um, where I was able to get a pretty decent pull off of that. So, um, yeah, practice makes perfect. And um, sometimes you have to just keep playing around with stuff until you get to the point where you can call it a win. I did think I would share with you the packing tape transfer technique. Maybe you haven't seen it before, maybe you have seen it before, um, but it's still a lot of fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do, well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do both of these images here. So I'm gonna, I have my packing tape. This is what I use for shipping here in the studio. And I'm just going to lay it down over my images. And I'm not, oh, I got a little, there we go. Um, until it, I'm going to overlap them some as we go up. Okay, so I don't like to have huge overlaps because they're very, you can really see them. So I tried to make sure that I didn't overlap that much. Now this is where you might want to have, um, let's get it out so that you can see it better, um, where you might want to have a, like a, oh, I keep forgetting what the word is for printmaking to go over it, or a um, bone folder. Um, I'm just actually going to use my fingernail to go over this just to make sure it's down real nice. So I have it really nicely burnished down. I did trim the images out. And then I have a nice pan of warm water. And actually, I'm going I'm to cut these into two. And we're going to just work on the one that I did before as well. Sometimes it's nice to see it done, you know the same thing again <laughs> anyway so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put this down in the water and it's gonna curl up like that and then I turn it over and I just let it set and if you can see where the paper is kind of changing um, color that's where it's soaking into the paper the water so that's a really good thing we're gonna let it sit there for a little while and uh, then I'm going to pull it out and share with you how I go about making it into the transfer. 
All right, I think I've let it soak long enough. Um, I do have my pan of water next to me in case I need to, um, you know, dip it again. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna start rubbing that paper off. You want to use a firm pressure, but you don't want to be too overzealous with it because you don't want to rub the ink or the toner off of the paper underneath. So I'm going to just put this back into my water real quick. What it does is it just dampens it up again and it gets rid of all the little flakes. it so I've got most of it off I left a little area here to show you you can see how that's cloudy there that tells me that we still have paper that needs to come off this over whoops where am I at? this over here as well and of course I think it's pretty obvious that I need to get all of that off so we're gonna go ahead and keep doing that I will tell you that I'm very happy about this toner printer in this regard as well. Many times I've done this technique in the past where I have pulled the toner up off of the tape pretty easily and this seems to be sticking really well to the tape or you know fusing with it I guess is a better way to say it because um, even when I go over these um, areas over and over and over again to try to get, you know, as much of that off as possible, I am not pulling the ink off or the toner off. So, um, but when you do it, you may find that you have to do it a few times and get the feel of it because um, you could very well be rubbing the toner off of your um, tape and you don't want to do that and sometimes it'll just take some trial and error for you to figure out what the right pressure is. So I am very very pleased with how she came out. Let's see if I can get the shine off. Um, there's not a lot of, turn, we'll turn it over, you can kind of see maybe right here there's a little bit of um, paper may be left there that I could get off if I wanted to. Sometimes that doesn't bother me at all because I think it adds a nice touch, but you'll see how nice and clear that image did come out. I have it on a white backing paper. Um, but yeah, so really easy, really quick little technique to get some really fun results. I thought I'd film the aftermath. So it's about time for me to pack up, clean up, and head home. And I don't know about you, but does your workspace look like this? When you're done doing art for the day? I've got jelly prints everywhere. So yeah, I have jelly prints everywhere, and I have to tell you that the majority of them did not work. 
<laughs> it's so frustrating. I'm beginning to think I'm not going to have any class proposals um, by the end of the week because if I can't get anything good out of this stuff, how's that going to how's that going to work? <laughs> so I've gotten everything pretty much put away, ready to go home for the day. Don't you love my hands? <laughs> Anyway, I thought I would share with you what I got done today, the good, the bad, the ugly. I was playing on the jelly plate all day today, and these are some of the prints that I um, finished. I actually like this. This was an accident. Um, I was pulling off. I even this, I used a scrap piece of paper just to pull off ink after I made a mistake using trying to do those um, transfers. But uh, these are all the different things that I did today. Um, this one, I can tell you what I did here. I had way too much white paint on the um, gel plate there. This one's kind of neat. This one has um, some detail in it from a st uh, stencil. I could do more with this. Some of these are just um, probably background papers. These with the black were made from a mistake. Um, I was trying to do the transfer and I'm, it wasn't working for me so I was trying to lift the paint off of the plate and I got some really cool results from that. I've got more coming later. This is also using a stencil. This is using bubble wrap. Like this one, this is one of those mistakes that I was trying to just get the paint off of the plate. Same thing here. Had a lot of white, can you tell? <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite ones, actually, and this was one of those mistake ones. Um, from just trying to get the paint off of the plate. I just really like the grunginess of this one. This one I was just playing around with the stencil. Right here we're go getting into the transfer mistakes. So I don't know if you can see that there's an image right here, or supposed to be an image right there. Um, what I did here was I had a good resist. I let it dry, but then I... <laughs> I tur don't do this at home. I turn. I cut out the the um, paper and turned it upside down on top of this to act like a um, mask, and that was dry too. But that up against the resist that was already on the plate, even though they were both dry, it pulled the ink right off of it, and so I didn't get a print off of that. Um, this is this is one of my favorite backgrounds too. This is just using some golden fluid acrylics on the plate. I really like the golden paint. It's too bad they are so expensive. This one is a fail, but a good fail. Um, I found here, this I was really trying to get this to work for me. This was text that I had done off of the um, laser printer. So I wanted to make sure that I could transfer text. And um, I was able to transfer some text. So that was cool. I was having a really hard time with the darker colors. Um, and I don't think I ever got a good pull or a good transfer with the black, but this one, you can see there's an image right here. Um, I did that one with the green and that came, obviously you can tell it's the green and that one came out okay. Um, this one I did with the blue and I don't know what was wrong on this one why she didn't come out better and I don't know if you can tell by that but sh I used um, half tone in the image itself on that one this one was also a fail but a good fail in that I was trying to I printed off some uh, text page this one had a little image on it and can you see that some of that came off on here um, so yeah, I was kind of happy with that. This is the best one out of all of them that I did today. Um, you can see her there. But yeah, <laughs> I, 
I, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with it. I think most people that do this, I mean, you always see the good videos of people. I'm going to turn the camera around so I can talk to you. Hold on. So I think that we always see the good stuff <laughs> when people put it on YouTube. Um, and I'm, I'm just wondering now how many polls, how many times I'm going to have to do this in order to get it to work for me um, consistently, consistently work for me. Part of it, um, one of the interesting things, my brayer, I've been cleaning it as I go. I've been using a baby wipe, rolling off on a baby wipe, rolling off on uh, paper. And I don't know if it's the type of brayer that I have, but it's not all coming off. And I don't know if that has something to do, well, I digress. I don't know if that has something to do with what was happening, so I'll explain. Um, what, when I would put down the Golden Fluid Acrylics, which is the ones that actually worked the best, I would roll it and I would get nice coverage and it looked good and I'd think, oh, well, maybe I need to roll off a little bit more to get it thin because thin is the key. And at a certain point, the brayer would roll the paint right back up on the brayer, completely off of the gel plate, nothing left. So I don't know if it's the type of brayer that I have. And I, the reason why I started at the beginning, I said I digress, because that happened before there was any paint on here. The very first time I used it, that happened. So I don't know if it's the brayer um, user error, probably. I don't know what that is, but... Um, yeah, so I'm thinking there's a couple other techniques on the jelly plate I wanted to try tomorrow. But then I'm going to have to start thinking about something else. Um, because I have to have class proposals done on Friday. You know, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm talking myself into not <laughs> worrying about it. <laughs> if I don't get to teach there this year... That mean that can be a significant amount of money, and then I was using that to do the world's longest yard sale um, event. So what it might mean is that I just don't do the world's longest yard sale. So we'll have to see. I'm not going to get too stressed out of it. I'm going to keep working, see what I can come up with, see if there's anything. But I've actually like I have a whole computer list full of classes that I teach, and I've gone through pretty much all of them that I'm still interested in and that I think other people would be interested in and they've seen it all so I am not quite sure what I'm gonna pull out <laughs> anyway hey guys thank you so much for joining me I hope that you enjoy this behind the scenes of an art studio I'm a working artist although Really, my vintage pays the bills, so I'm still struggling to be an artist. I hope maybe some of you out there maybe are in the same situation and are interested in how that works. I don't know. <laughs> um, and hey, if you came over from Mimi's Treasure Cottage, I hope you like the behind the scenes of that as well. If you're new to my channel and you like this sort of thing, please consider subscribing. And for everybody, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And a comment. The comments are so important. Um, even if you just leave punctuation or an emoji, it all helps the YouTube algorithm, helps the channel get noticed. And one of my goals is to get to a thousand by the end of the year on this channel, on uh, Cindy Duncan Art. So I could use your help, share with people that you think might be interested. And um, I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.